So welcome to all the viewers and uh, I uh, sincerely welcome you to the Bear for Health podcast uh, where we talk about health, wellness and everything in, in between. I'm your host Parikshit Chindhade. There's a very famous quote uh, by an American author, Jim Rohn. He says that take care of your body. It's the only place that you have to live. Today, we are dry, diving into a topic that doesn't get much, much attention, which is chronic kidney disease. And uh, incidentally, we are recording this podcast in run-up to the World Kidney Day. This year's theme for World Kidney Day is, are, are your kidneys okay? Detect early, protect early. To help us navigate this topic, we have Dr. P.S. Wadi. He is head and senior nephrologist at the Asian Institute of Nephrology and Urology, Hyderabad. He is the secretary of Hyderabad Nephrology Forum, who will share his insights into World Kidney Day prevalence, risk, and factors that uh, and preventive measures. So, welcome, uh, Dr. Bali, to the show. Uh, so, uh, let's start with some perspectives. Uh, so, Dr. Bali, how common is kidney disease, and why uh, one should be more aware of it? Chronic kidney disease is a significant public health issue. Chronic kidney disease almost involves 850 million population across the globe. That means it is a significant burden for any public health organization all across the world. And more importantly, Indian statistics are also more concernful. It is estimated that the prevalence of CKD, chronic kidney disease in India, has escalated from almost 10% to 16% over the past one decade. So this indicates the gravity of the situation. This very fact that the prevalence of CKD has increased in India from 10% to 16% over the past one decade is alarming and signals the fact that we need to make mechanisms, we need to orchestrate mechanisms which focus on early detection and targeted therapies. Therefore, chronic kidney disease is always a great burden. And more importantly, Chronic kidney disease is one of the perplexing disorders what a mankind knows. It is perplexing for the meaning that chronic kidney disease does not manifest any significant symptoms until 10% of the kidney function is lost. That means a person of chronic kidney disease don't manifest any symptoms till 90% of the kidney power has been lost. This wow. is basing on the fact that kidneys are such a robust organs that they don't manifest any of the prominent symptoms until an individual loses 90% of the kidney functions. Therefore, kidney failure patients usually present to the clinical attention at a very late stage. The only way to pick up kidney disease is early detection. Right. So thank you. I think these are amazing insights. So Dr. Bali, we all know that kidneys, uh, you know, filter waste and clearly they are important organs. But, uh, you know, what is the exact role of kidneys and, you know, how does the role of kidneys go beyond, you know, filtration of waste? So, can you explain why kidney kidneys are important for overall health of a, of, of a human being? Kidneys are a pair of marvelous organs granted by Mother Nature. People presume that kidneys function only as filtering organs. People always assume that kidneys are only excretory organs. But kidneys perform many functions. Rather, it performs a multitude of seamless functions all throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year. Kidneys are not only mere filtering organs, but they play a very key role in few aspects. For example, kidney is regarded as the controlling center for orchestrating of blood pressure. That means the main pathophysiological mechanism for the origin and genesis of hypertension lies with kidneys. And more importantly, kidney is very essential for increasing the hemoglobin. Because of erythropoietin axis, kidney plays a pivotal role in maintaining proper hemoglobin and proper RBC count for any individual. And more importantly, kidney plays a pivotal role in preserving the bone health via the medium of vitamin D production. Therefore, kidney functions much beyond its said role as excretory organs. Kidneys perform multitasking. Kidney perform multitude of functions. Therefore, kidneys are regarded as robust and seamlessly functioning organs. Wow. So I think uh, clearly, you know, for layman, uh, you know, kidney, as I've said earlier, that it, it really, you know, uh, they feel that it's just a filtering organ. But clearly, there is there's much more to kidney and really regulates the body in ways that we cannot imagine. So that brings me to my next question that uh, uh, who is most vulnerable to develop a kidney disease? That's a wonderful question. All patients, all individuals don't develop kidney disorders just like that. There are few subsets of individuals. There are few subsets of patients who are more prone to develop chronic kidney disease. Number one being diabetes. 
Diabetes is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease all across the globe. Why? Because almost 30 to 40 percent of individuals are prone to develop some form of kidney disorders in their lifetimes. That means out of 100 diabetics, there is every probable statistical chance that 30 to 40 percent of diabetes can develop some form, either in a smaller way or a bigger way, some form of kidney disorder in their lifespan. The second most common cause of kidney disease all across the globe is uncontrolled hypertension. Not all hypertensives. Few hypertensive subsets such as hypertensives in young or hypertensions whose BP is not controlled or in those individuals where hypertension plays a wilder form of projection. They are the individuals who are more prone to develop chronic kidney disease. The third subset of patients who are more prone to develop chronic kidney disease are those patients who are having poor heart fun functioning disorders. That means those individuals who are having cardiac issues, those patients who are having heart failure, they are three times more prone to develop chronic kidney disease. The fourth important subset of patients who tend to develop chronic kidney disorder are those patients who have a family history of chronic kidney disease, such as autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disorders. And fifth subset of patients who are prone to develop chronic kidney disease are those patients who are habituated for chronic painkiller uses. A subset of painkillers being NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Those individuals who are taking these drugs on their own without medical attention, without any discretion, are more prone to develop chronic kidney disorder. The last set of patients who are more prone to develop chronic kidney disorder are those patients who are obese in nature. Therefore, there are the six categories of patients, six subsets of patients who are more prone to develop chronic kidney disease patients. And therefore, individuals with these risk factors should be extra cautious in picking up chronic kidney disease. Right. So amazing. I think uh, really it's a versatile organ and it really deserves a lot of care and respect that it, it really has. So that brings me to the next uh, question, which is again linked to what you've just said, that uh, since it is always uh, believed or said that prevention is better than cure. So uh, in your opinion, sir, what are the lifestyle changes that an individual should undertake so that the kidney health uh, remains protected uh, for years to come? As I said previously, kidneys are mighty organs but kidneys are kind organs. If a person can exercise few basic lifestyle measures, few dietary changes, then we can very well preserve our kidneys. The first and foremost measure to prevent kidney disease is respect your diabetes. Try to detect diabetes at the early stage. Try to control your diabetes in a proper range. Always make sure that in diabetics, the three months sugar average, that means HbA1c, hemoglobin A1c should be less than seven. That's the reason my professor used to say, the lucky number for a diabetic is 7. Those diabetics <laughs> who maintain their HbA1c less than 7 can maintain their kidneys forever in a healthy way. That is right. The second thing is, those people who are having hypertension, make sure that the blood pressure target is less than 130 by 80 or at least 135 by 85. The third important reason is, the third mechanism or third maneuver one has to exercise to preserve the kidney function is, Salt restriction. Salt is not bad, but only issue is one person has to consume less than five grams of salt per day. Five grams of salt is nothing but one teaspoon per day. The best way to curtail the salt is restricting outside food because it's outside food which contains invisible form of salt. An ice cream contains a salt, a papad contains a salt, chips also contain a salt. So the most important thing is by cut short in the outside food we'll be able to restrict our salt consumption so that we'll be able to achieve the target of less than 5 grams per day. And the fourth important measure to protect your kidneys is maintaining your ideal body weight. Because obesity is the strongest risk factor. And the most important thing and the most hyper thing is regarding water intake. Water intake has to be optimum. It should not be too much water intake. It should not be too much less water intake. The best water intake is the one which is going to target for urine output of 3 liters per day. Therefore, it does not mean that to protect the kidneys, a person has to consume six to seven liters of water. And it does not mean that a person should consume only one liter. For a person who is living in India, probably he need to consume somewhere around 3.2 liters of water per day. And more importantly, one need to target for urine output of 2.5 to 3 liters. Therefore, by following all these things, one can protect the kidneys. And more importantly, especially for patients who are living in Indian subcontinent, don't abuse your painkillers. Mm. In India, painkillers are available as over counter prescription, but still that does not mean that we need to abuse the painkiller uses. So whenever there is a pain, you try to use either paracetamol, which is relatively kidney friendly, rather than directly going it with 
much powerful NSAID type of painkillers. Therefore, by maintaining all these things, probably we'll be able to safeguard our kidneys forever. Wow, I think uh, the passion that you've uh, spoken with is really amazing and your enthusiasm is truly contagious. So we are now almost at the end of our uh, podcast. And, uh, uh, you know, since it's the World Kidney Day uh, is approaching and, you know, we want to celebrate this entire month as uh, World Kidney Month, uh, I would request if you can just give a couple of takeaways for our listeners that what, what they should do essentially to maintain kidney health. You've already summed that up, but, you know, what would be your like key takeaways? The first and foremost takeaway is remember that kidneys are amazing organs, but we need to show some amount of care and love towards them. The second takeaway is Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease all across the globe in India also. Therefore, try to respect diabetes. Try to pick up diabetes at the very early stage. If at all you happen to be diabetic, never get disappointed. Try to maintain a lucky number of HbA1c of less than 7. And more importantly, kidney disorders are very much preventable by following a subset of lifestyle measures such as restricting the salt intake to less than 5 grams per day, adequate control of diabetes and hypertension and maintaining ideal body weight and more importantly by not abusing painkillers. Therefore, by following all these things, we can always collectively together lead our pay our way to a beautiful kidney health and we can be safe. Right. Amazing, sir. Amazing uh, insights, uh, great clarity. And I think uh, whatever messages you just mentioned, I think I equally resonate with them that uh, Kidney health is something which is very important and it's a, it's a very, very important organ and you've got to really respect this organ by taking good care of it. So, uh, Dr. Wali, I, on behalf of uh, Bear, I would like to sincerely thank you for accepting our invitation to be part of this podcast. And I think uh, uh, your talk was really insightful. It gave the listeners a lot of uh, clarity on kidney health and the way you explained it in a very lucid uh, manner. It's uh, really amazing. So, thank you so much for, for joining us on this podcast. And I hope uh, that you know, we interact uh, in uh, more such forums in the future. So thank you once again. And uh, to our listeners who are uh, watching this or seeing this program, uh, I, I urge all of you to take uh, good care of your kidneys because they are really uh, the vital organs and their role goes much beyond uh, filtration. And uh, to get more updates uh, on, on such uh, wonderful insights, please uh, like, share and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels on Bear for Health India. Thank you so much and uh, keep watching the space for more information. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wali. It was uh, uh, really amazing uh, interacting with you. And, uh, you know, uh, thanks, thanks once again for being a part of this uh, podcast. Really a great session, really insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Parishit. Thank you, Bear India. Thank you so much. Thank you.